Dirty Man is an urban legend that tells the scary story of a murdered slave who returns from the dead in search of revenge if you say his name 5 times. A horror movie was made in 1992 about the legend, followed by two sequels starring Tony Todd as the Candyman. According to the legend, if you look into a mirror and chant the name Candyman 5 times, he will appear behind you and kill you with his hook. For you, the Candyman is a vicious killer with bloody hook for a hand. He appears from the mirror covered in blood and bees. and he has nothing but murder in his mind they say that many years ago the candy man was a real man back in the days of slavery candy man was a black slave named daniel robitail who worked on a plantation in new orleans he was a talented painter and was chosen by the plantation owner to paint a portrait of his daughter But Daniel fell in love with the daughter of the white plantation owner. When the racist plantation owner discovered that his daughter and the slave were in love, he raised an angry mob and chased Daniel out of town. Armed with pitchforks and a pack of dogs, they chased the poor slave across fields and streams. Finally, they caught up with the exhausted slave near an old barn. The evil men seized Daniel and cut off his right arm. with a rusty saw then they covered him in honey and threw him in the beehive the unfortunate candy man was in terrible pain and died from his injuries but not before he cursed the men who killed him and vowed to return and exact his revenge they say his spirit would never rest and now his ghost walks the world for eternity appearing when his name is called five times So remember you can say candy man once twice thrice or four times but never say it five times or you'll be sorry Baby Blue Blue Baby Blue is an urban legend about a strange game that kids play in bathrooms If you perform the ritual they say an evil ghostly infant will appear in your arms This urban legend is related to the myth of Bloody Mary To play Blue Baby Blue, you have to go into the bathroom on your own, turn off the lights and lock the door. Then you stare into the mirror, hold out your arms like you're rocking a baby and repeat the words Baby Blue, Blue Baby 13 times without making a mistake. If you do it right, you will suddenly feel the weight of an invisible baby in your arms. The baby will get heavier and heavier as it grows larger and larger. you will feel it scratching your arms before it gets too heavy you have to quickly take the invisible baby flush it down the toilet and run out of the bathroom if you don't do it fast enough a hideous woman will appear in the mirror she will yell give me back my baby and scream loud enough to break glass if you're still holding the baby she will kill you Some people believe the woman is Bloody Mary and she murdered her own child when she shattered a mirror and used a piece of broken glass to stab him to death. According to the urban legend, a group of girls found out about the blue baby story and decided to try it out. They didn't believe it would work, so they sent their friend Laura into the bathroom on her own. She returned the lights off and closed the doors behind her. Laura put out arms and started chanting the phrase blue baby baby blue. All of a sudden a baby appeared in her arms and began scratching her. Laura was scared out of her wits and had no idea what to do. She wanted to drop it and run, but she was afraid of what might happen. She just stood there holding the invisible baby as it grew heavier and heavier. Suddenly she caught sight of something horrible in the bathroom mirror and screamed in terror. When Laura's friends heard her screaming, they tried to open the bathroom door but it was locked. Finally, they managed to run to a friend's house to get help. When they broke open the door, they found Laura lying on the bathroom floor. Her eyes had been scratched out. They couldn't move her body because something large and invisible was pinning her to the ground. Hello Kitty. 
The real story of Hello Kitty is a scary urban legend about the origin in popular Japanese cartoon character. They say that Hello Kitty is a demonic and was originally a product of devil worship and a satanic power. According to the legend, Hello Kitty was created back in 1970s by a Chinese woman. Apparently, her 14-year-old daughter was diagnosed with cancer of the mouth. The doctors told that her child was terminally ill and there was nothing they could do about her. The mother refused to give up hope and visited every church in the city to pray for her daughter. When that didn't work, she came to the end of her rope. The desperate mother became involved in satanic rituals and devil worship. Then, they say in order to save her daughter's life, she made a pact with the devil himself. For curing her daughter's cancer, the devil demanded only one thing in return. She would have to create a cartoon character that would appeal to children all over the world. The devil wanted to use the popularity of this cartoon character to trick people into worshipping Saturn. When her daughter recovered from cancer, her mother kept the promise to the devil. She created Hello Kitty. As the story goes, Hello Kitty was designed with no mouth because the daughter had the cancer of the mouth. Hello Kitty's pointed ears represent the devil's horns. The word Kitty means demon in Chinese. So Hello Kitty really means Hello Demon. They say that anyone who buys Hello Kitty merchandise is welcoming the devil into their hearts. Satanists all over the world use Hello Kitty as a secret symbol and many of them actually tattoo the image on their skin. Devil worshippers refer to Hello Kitty as the daughter of the devil. Of course, this is just an urban myth. Hello Kitty was actually created by a Japanese company named Sanrio that specializes in designing and branding cartoon characters. Hello Kitty was originally designed to be decoration on a purse. Also, Kitty does not mean demon in Chinese. Carmen Winstead The scary story of Carmen Winstead is an urban legend about a 17-year-old girl who was pushed down a sewer opening by five girls she thought were her friends. The chain letter claims that a boy named David Gregory died when he didn't pass it on. Carmen Winstead was 17 years old when her parents decided to move to Indiana. Her father has lost his job and the only way he could find new employment was by moving to a new state. The relocation caused a lot of problems for Carmen. She had to leave her friends behind and attend a whole new school in Indiana. Carmen had a hard time making friends when she changed schools. It was the middle of the school year and most of the students had no interest in befriending the new girl. Initially, she spent many days alone, walking from class to class without speaking to anyone, but she eventually started hanging around with a group of five other girls. Carmen thought these girls were her friends, but it wasn't long before she discovered that when they had been talking about her behind her back and spreading wild rumours. When she confronted them, the girls turned on her and began bullying her every day, making her life a misery. They started out calling her names, but then the bullying got much worse. One day, she left her school books in the classroom at break time. When she returned, she found someone had taken a sharpie and written dirty words all over her books. Another day, she opened her bag and discovered someone had poured yogurt all over the insides. Sometimes she would come to school and find her locker had been vandalized. The final straw came when she put on her coat at recess and found that someone had stuffed dog poop in her pockets. There and then, Carmen decided that she wouldn't take the bullying any longer. She planned to stay behind that evening after school and tell her teacher what was been happening. Unfortunately, her decision came too late to save her life. After lunch, her teacher announced that the school was holding a fire drill. When the alarm sounded, Carmen and other students filed out of the classroom and assembled in the yard outside. As the teachers read out the roll calls, 
the gang of five girls decided that this was a great opportunity to embarrass Carmen in front of the whole school during the fire drill. They moved over to where Carmen was standing near a sewer drain and began crowding the poor girl, getting in her face and nudging her towards the open manhole. They pushed her and she tripped over and fell head first down the manhole. When they saw her falling, the girls started giggling and when Carmen's name was called out, they shouted, she's down in the sewer. All of the other students began laughing. But when the teachers looked down the manhole and saw Carmen's body lying at the bottom in the muck and the poop, the laughter abruptly stopped. Her head was twisted around at an odd angle and her face was covered in blood. Worst still, she wasn't moving. There was nothing any of the teachers could do for her. Carmen was dead. When the police arrived and went down in the sewer, they determined that she had broken her neck. Her face had been torn off when she hit the ladder on the way down and her neck snapped when she landed on her head on the concrete at the bottom. The police hauled Carmen's body out of the sewer and sent her to the mortuary. Everyone had to stay behind after school while the police questioned all the Carmen's classmates. The five girls lied to the police saying they had been witnessed Carmen's falling down the sewer. The police believed the girls and Carmen Winstead's death was ruled an accident and the case was closed. Everyone thought that was the last they would hear of Carmen Winstead, but they were wrong. Months later, Carmen's classmates began receiving strange emails on their MySpaces. The emails were titled, They Pushed Her and claimed that Carmen hadn't really fallen down the sewer, she had been pushed. The emails also warned that the guilty people should own up and take responsibility for their crime. If they didn't, there would be horrible consequences. Most people dismissed the emails as a hoax, but others were not so sure. A few days later, one of the girls who pushed Carmen down the sewer was at home taking a shower when she heard a strange crackling laugh. It seemed to be coming from the drain. The girl started to freak out and ran out of the bathroom. That night, the girl said goodnight to her mom and went to sleep. Five hours later, her mom was awoken in the middle of the night by a loud noise that resounded throughout the house. She ran into her daughter's room only to find it empty. There was no trace of the girl. The worried mother called the police and when they arrived, they conducted a search of the area. Eventually, they discovered the girl's grisly remains. Her corpse was lying in the sewer, covered in muck and poop. Her neck was broken and her face was missing. It had been completely torn off. One by one, all of the girls who pushed Carmen that day were found dead. They had all been killed in exactly the same way and were all found in exactly the same spot, in the sewer at the bottom of the same uncovered manhole where Carmen had met her doom. But the killing didn't stop there. More and more of Carmen's former classmates were found dead. It seemed that anyone who didn't believe that Carmen had been pushed was eventually found down in the sewer with their necks broken and their faces torn off. They say that Carmen's ghost is still on the rampage, hunting down anyone who doesn't believe her story. According to the legend, Carmen will get you whether it's from toilet, a shower, a sink or a drain. When you go to sleep, you'll wake up in the sewer in complete darkness, paralyzed, unable to move, hearing cackling laughter all around you. Then as you scream in horror, Carmen will come and tear off your face.